Betsy uh, has got a master's in public health, and she's the director of research at the Association for Non-Smokers of Minnesota. In her role as director of research, Betsy closely monitors tobacco industry marketing tactics and new tobacco products. She's particularly knowledgeable about the ways that tobacco company market their products to young adults through the mail and on the web. Uh, and a couple weeks ago, do you want to talk about the senator? I, I happened to see um, a snitch of um, uh, Senate hearing. Uh, the e-cigarette manufacturers were on on the carpet, and the one senator said, "I don't know how you can sleep at night with what you're doing." And he talked about the these things with in contact with skin, the nicotine invading our skin, and that type of thing. Betsy, here you are. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much for lunch. That was great. Um, I'm with the Association for Non-Smokers Minnesota, or ANSWER, and we're a nonprofit organization that's been around since 1973. I um, mean, a lot of times I hear people say, well, why are you even still working on that? We solved tobacco. It's not a problem anymore. Um, and while we have made a lot of progress over the last five decades, uh, tobacco is still the leading cause of death and disease in Minnesota, in the country, and in the world, uh, soon to be in the world. Uh, so, um, you know, I think a lot of what we do is really focused on youth prevention. So that's what I really want to talk about today is products that we view as concerning because we feel they're attractive to youth. So e-cigarettes and cheap cigars. And I brought some show and tell. So the tobacco industry uh, continues to evolve. They really, um, we put a lot of regulation in place to kind of restrict marketing to youth. We had the tobacco settlement, um, but the tobacco industry really has found ways to kind of get around a lot of the regulations that we have in place. So there's a lot of focus on flavoring, uh, products that really are able to avoid smoke-free laws, taxation, etc. So today, these are the products I'm going to talk about. So we'll start with e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes have three primary components. There's a battery, an atomizer, which heats up this nicotine fluid um, and creates a mist, um, and then an inhaler. And I'll show you some. So a lot, of, a lot of them look like this. So they look more like a cigarette. Um, and these are disposable. So probably about two packs of cigarettes, you'd, that, that's what that's equivalent. Is it recyclable? Well, that's another issue. Um, <laughs> that is an issue. Uh, so the, it's powered by, they're powered by lithium ion batteries, which are very polluting. Um, so that's another issue um, that I think is concerning as somebody who really wouldn't want these to get into the environment if people just threw them out. There's kind of three primary types, the mini, which is the one I just passed around. And then there's a mid-size, which looks, um, this is sort of like the next level up. So these are usually what people graduate to. So I can pass this around. Uh, I would just caution, don't open this. Um, this is nicotine um, juice, and it can be absorbed through the skin. Uh, I was presenting to a Ramsey County Sheriff, and by accident, he opened it and spilled it all over himself. Um, so basically, with that kind, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, I think he started feeling a little strange. <laughs> um, so. Um, Anyway, with this type of device, you buy this device, it's probably about $100, and then you can refill it with the, the juice. And then there are even more advanced levels called personal vaporizers, and a lot of people, somebody mentioned this to me, a lot of people use this too um, with uh, hash oil, so THC, marijuana oil, people can uh, fill them up with that as well. Um, the juice, uh, the liquid, has three primary ingredients. It's got nicotine, uh, propylene glycol, which is... Um, used in fog machines to create that vapor. It's used for a lot of different things, de-icing airplanes, um, and then flavoring. And the flavoring is what really concerns us because a lot of the flavors are extremely appealing to youth. Um, I have a couple examples. We've got Mountain Dew, Sour Patch Kid. Oh my God. Um, I had a fruit stripe in here. Um, I've got, yeah, we've seen Gummy Bear. Um, Pretty much any flavor that you think a young person would like exists. Uh, so here I've got 
Fruit stripe, yeah. This one's blueberry, I think, and it's rainbow colored. So what do we know about nicotine? You know, a lot of people are saying, well, we don't know about the health effects of these things and they might, they might be okay. Well, we, we do need to do more research on these products, that's for sure. But we do know a lot about nicotine. We have decades of research on nicotine. So we know nicotine is extremely addictive. It's as addictive as cocaine, heroin um, on that, that scale. Um, there's side effects that you would see with nicotine that you'd see with any stimulant. So increased blood pressure, heart rate, that sort of thing. Basically, like I said, we need to do more research on these products, but the research that's coming out shows that the vapor that's exhaled does contain nicotine. Uh, some vapor has been found to have kind of heavy metals and really small particles which can go deeply into the lungs, and that's what can cause a lot of um, cardiac inflammation, that sort of thing. We don't know a lot about prevalence. We know that sales are increasing rapidly, so this marketplace is just expanding with very little regulation or control. Um, and some are predicting that sales of e-cigarettes could overtake traditional cigarette sales in the next decade. Uh, we have some national data on youth prevalence, and what we're seeing is pretty alarming. The rates are doubling. Uh, so from 2011 to 2012, the number of youth who reported using these went up, um, doubled. Uh, and these youth are also reporting using cigarettes. So there's a lot of dual use of different types of products, which uh, there's not a lot of data on how much harm that could cause, but it doesn't seem like it would be a good idea. Now the e-cigarette companies, the tobacco companies that we have known about for years, they're all getting into this market. And the companies are really taking a page out of what I would call a tobacco marketing playbook. And there's a lot of emphasis on celebrity endorsements, TV ads, social media. I've got some examples. Now, a lot of these are really offensive, so I'm sorry if these offend you, but it's hard to find some that aren't offensive. Um, but this is an Enjoy. Enjoy is that one I passed around uh, commercial that actually ran during the Super Bowl. Um, and Enjoy was one of the companies that um, their CEO was before the Senate hearing, and they were questioning, you say you're not targeting youth, but then why are you doing ads that are being seen by millions of youth? Jenny McCarthy, so Blue is a company that's actually owned by the company that makes Newport cigarettes. They're doing a lot of celebrity endorsements. Jenny McCarthy is just one. Uh, they have a Facebook page. Um, there's a kind of a, a back to the golden age type of theme with a lot of these, so World War II era type uh, theme going on here. So there was a lot of effort at the state this year to regulate these products. Uh, so the new state law, does prohibit indoor e-cigarette use in a number of places, so um, government buildings, schools, but it doesn't restrict indoor use in most workplaces. In most places you would go, like in here, there's no regulation unless the hotel said we don't want them in here. Um, the new law also says that these products need to be sold in child-resistant packaging, which was a great uh, when? Because these juices, um, as you've seen, they aren't sold in childproof, uh, or they haven't been. And that, those bottles I passed around probably have two or three uh, fatal doses for an adult. Um, and if you think about a kid maybe drinking it, um, there's been a lot of poisonings. So it also prohibits small kiosks from selling these products. Um, so we did make some uh, progress. But cities really have an important role to play, and um, Bloomington could uh, restrict all indoor use of e-cigarettes like they did with smoking. Um, and this is something that the city is currently considering. So um, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but um, if this is something that you feel is important or you're interested in, I would recommend, um, you know, I think it'd be great to contact your city council member and let them know how you feel about it. So flavored cigars, what I'm talking about are small, they're flavored again, they have kid-friendly names, they're really cheap, um, I have more examples. So like we've got three for $1.49, white grape, uh, I think this is watermelon, three for 99, grape, strawberry, um, I'll just pass these around. Um, if you don't go into convenience stores very often, you probably don't know or think much about these products, but 
what we're seeing is these products are just proliferating. There's more and more brands of them, more package types, more flavors. Here's a display we found in the metro area. I can't remember if it was in Bloomington, but it might have been. Um, but I think there's like, what is that, 78 different types of these products at this one place, and they're all flavored. Um, so more than half of your vendor, tobacco vendors here sell them. So these are very common items. Uh, this is not just kind of here and there. You'll find these pretty regularly when you look in convenience stores. We know that uh, cigar sales have more than doubled in the past decade, but during the same period, cigarette sales went down. So what that makes us worry is that we're making a lot of progress on cigarettes, but maybe we're not dealing with um, these other products. Cigar use is really common among students in Bloomington Public Schools. So just in the last 30 days, uh, one in three 12th grade males report using these products. Um, the numbers are quite, lower, quite a bit lower with the female 12th graders, but that's kind of typical for tobacco use. Uh, but that's really high, and that's concerning because when people start using tobacco at a young age, they're more likely to have a lifelong addiction, um, which we know has devastating consequences. Um, so what do we see as far as promotion? Well, it's, these products are really associated with kind of hip-hop culture, vocabulary. There's really an effort to market these to African-American youth. Um, and then there's a lot of overtones about drug use because, again, a lot of these products are used um, to roll marijuana. So, um, again, social media. Here's an example. This is a Facebook page for Splitterillos. Uh, the, their motto is split it with your friends, which seems like a kind of a kid-friendly motto to me. Uh, Snoop Dogg, who's very popular with young people, has a brand of these. He has a Facebook page. Uh, we're seeing lots of YouTube kind of commercials about these products. Here's one that Snoop Dogg did with, with almost uh, 2 million views. So, you know, there's a lot of promotion out there. So these products really are able to avoid most of what we put in place to deal with cigarettes. So, for example, cigarettes are, cannot be flavored, except for menthol, uh, but these products can. Um, what else? Cigarettes need to be sold in packs of 20, but these can be sold singly for extremely cheap. They're taxed differently at the state and the federal level, so for these really cheap products, they're usually taxed very little. Um, so there's just a lot of area where these products kind of get through a lot of different loopholes. And what we're seeing is cities try to deal with these products, saying, you know, this is a problem. We don't think that one in three of our youth should be using these, um, and what can we do? So Brooklyn Center recently passed a policy that regulated the minimum price and a minimum pack size, so to get away from these really cheap little cigars that we're seeing for 50 cents. What did this in Brooklyn Center mean? So they did, they said, <coughs> sorry, I don't know what that was. Um, they said that the singles have to be sold for at least $2.10. So right now they're anywhere from 50 to 75 to 90 cents. Um, so they basically tried to set kind of a floor price just to say, this is too cheap for such a deadly product. Let's try to increase the price. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, I guess I'm a little uh, not on the <laughs> difference between a cigarette and a cigar. What is different between a cigar or a cigarette? Just the product itself that allows it to be regulated. Yeah. So, um, okay, she uh, asked, what is the difference between a cigarette and a cigar that allows kind of this difference in regulation? So, a lot of times, um, like the cigarette tax, it's called just that a cigarette tax. And then, um, so because these are labeled as cigar, they're cigar. Um, and then there's a couple other definitions, like a cigar is usually rolled in um, kind of some paper that has tobacco in it. So there's a lot of um, kind of gray and area where the companies themselves can manipulate the products to kind of get around regulation, which is what we feel that has purposely happened. So we put this regulation into place, it's great, but then the company sometimes even rebrand the product that was maybe a cigarette as a cigar now um, and change the wrapper a little bit. So there's, there's a lot of um, kind of gray, I would say. So Bloomington is, uh, this was another um, policy option that could be on the table in Bloomington was what Brooklyn Center did. The city council is also, is also pretty interested in trying to address the flavoring. So a lot of cities have done that where they say, um, you can't have a flavored cigar, just like you can't have a flavored cigarette. 
Um, so these are kind of all policy options that the city council is considering and will be considering over the next few months. Um, so for you, I think if this is some, if something that means something to you or um, is important to you, kind of now is your chance to really have your voice heard at Bloomington, at the Bloomington City Council. Um, we feel that these products are very appealing to youth and are specifically designed for youth. Um, so, you know, we feel that efforts to kind of restrict their marketing or restrict their promotion um, will be a benefit to the youth of the city. Um, so, here's my contact information. If you um, have any questions or you want to follow up with me or uh, give me any feedback, um, I would love to talk with any of you. So, yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. Because I'm bothered by mine for the last 50 years, and I traveled over since. A country like Singapore, and you're coming down to the immigration, it's a <coughs> level 12 feet high. Anybody caught with any kind of drugs will be put to death no matter who you are. You could be a president of the country. Anybody who is going to bring drugs in this country better just not take the escalator into the, just stay in the, in the lounge and go back. What's wrong with our country? As far as tobacco, why we are... We, we do the same thing but tobacco. Safety. We don't have to have this Obama care and this care and that care. So a lot of money is spent on, on, on uh, uh, wasteful uh, taking care of the people who are doing these wrong things. But tobacco is a legal product. Uh, make it illegal. Well, so that's a whole separate deal, right? Yes, it is a separate deal and it's costing us money. Well, you can't make it illegal. <laughs> that's why. We, we can't make it drugs in. If you make it illegal, there'll be a black market for it tomorrow, and the, yes. the, the wrong people will get the money. So, do you know so this? Legalizing the, the taxes. You think that's what is happening in the city? Keep it out of kids' hands. <coughs> I'm not sure there would be the political will to kill people for smoking. You be surprised. We have many fish in between. But the point is, uh, I'm asking her, to, first of all, to the you give me a talk, is you are trying to discourage this kind of stuff. And we do all this Mickey Mouse for one city to the other city. We've got a nation here who's, uh, we know they suffer because of this. Uh, but if they were suffering on their own and they don't end up in the emergency hospital and they get money from the people who are provided that money through taxes, I think we probably will take care of itself. Do we know that e-cigarettes are toxic? Do we know, what do, what do, we, what do we know about, about Yeah. That? Well, we definitely need to learn a lot more. I would say that. Um, so part of the problem is there's so many of these pro products on the market. I mean, there's hundreds. So one study might look at just this one brand, but it, you can't even generalize. Um, what we know is that nicotine itself is a toxic substance. Um, and we, some studies have found, you know, kind of that these products, um, there's kind of the small particles I talked about that we know cause heart disease and things like that. So we know that, but we definitely need to know a lot more. Um, but I think... Um, My question is, is it better than smoking? Well, I think that's kind of... Um, it's hard to say because a lot of people, the way they're using these products, they're using them in addition to cigarettes. So people might actually be becoming more deeply addicted. Um, is it better for us to inhale it? I don't know, a second hand, you know, it's hard to say. And um, I guess it's part of the sort of idea of, do we want to kind of prevent risk or do we want to wait and find out there's a risk and then prevent it, which is what we've done with cigarettes. Um, so there's definitely a lot of debate going on about it, and I think we definitely need to learn a lot more. And I think people are studying it, so I think there will be some, but. Wow. Yeah, I wanted to know, uh, why is alcohol and cigarette treated differently? 
uh, like for alcohol we have an age limit. Mm -hmm. uh, we have no limit limits for cigarettes. Yeah. Is it really yeah, like a drug or? Cigarettes you actually have to be 18 to purchase. Alcohol you have to be 21. I can't speak about it. I'm not sure why there's that difference. Um, Some cities are What about these cigarettes? Yeah, as of uh, this session, now it's very clear in Minnesota state law you have to be 18 to purchase. I think I know the answer to that. They used to have it at 18 when I was 18 you could drink. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. they, they, put, they put it back to 21 because kids are still in high school at 18 and so there were so many accidents with kids still in high school so they put it back at 21 um, so that you have those few years. Right. Before yeah, that, you, that I, think, I think that, as I recall, it was yeah. the reason why. Is that a way to measure the and you're going to find something that, right? Is that anything with cigarettes like that? There's carbon monoxide, things like that that you can oh. test for, but it's not. <clears throat> you may have mentioned this before, I'm sorry, but do you guys get any of the tobacco fund settlement money to advertise your calls to school programs or TV programs or something? So um, a, a portion of the money went to fund Clearway, Minnesota. And they do quit plan. You've probably seen those ads and things like that. So they got about 200 million, um, and they're a foundation. So we do get uh, one grant from them. They do competitive grant making, uh, but the rest of the money that came to the state of Minnesota actually was first. It was diverted into the general fund, so none of it goes to prevention at all. Um, and then a couple years ago, they sold off future payments to to um, take care of the deficit. So they sold what's called tobacco bonds. Uh, so right now, um, none of those monies go towards prevention of any kind. Well, you could thank Governor Valenti for that. It's during his term. But then. Road runs yeah. not a political. I saw a reference. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a reference last week. Oh, 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 oh. I saw a reference last week to the <clears throat> joints. And where is that going? Because they're using the marijuana oil or gel in the e-cigarettes. Yeah, so I don't know that much about it, but as part of the medical marijuana law, you can vaporize this oil. So you can do something to THC and make it into this oil, um, and you can use these vaporizers. So that's allowed under the medical marijuana law, but smoking is not. Marcel, what was your association? Association Okay. Uh, we're a nonprofit. We primarily try to work on policy and advocacy type of efforts uh, to pre prevent youth initiation. Yep. Um, the University of Minnesota, as of tomorrow, is smoke free, which uh, several campuses around the United States are. When they say smoke free, does that apply to any of these products? So it, uh, the U, the policy does apply to e-cigarettes um, and all other. I guess all forms of tobacco, smokeless, everything. And the U chose to do that because they felt that, uh, you know, they're preparing the future workforce um, and felt that we really want people coming out of here tobacco free to be healthy um, employees. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow is the day. Yeah? I think it's worth saying when we talk about what's the most dangerous. It's not, it's, it's not nicotine in cigarettes that kill it's not the tobacco, it's the products of combustion. That's where the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons come from that mess with your DNA, that screw up your lungs, and do all, all of the bad things. That said, nicotine is bad for you. I don't think anybody questions that. So that I have to say that as a matter of perspective, because if we could eliminate smoking without cooking kids on nicotine, we would save a lot of money mm -hmm. and the world would be a better place. Sweden, by the way, has proven this because Sweden has made, a, the health officials in Sweden made an active attempt to switch people from cigarettes to snuff. Now, <laughs> what snuff isn't real good for you either, you mm -hmm. cause oral cancer. The Sweden has the lowest lung cancer rate in Europe. The other question, the question now, that's, that's my common kind of question. Um, with all the fuss about e-cigarettes, there's also orbs and strips and a whole bunch of other 
things that are out there for, for delivering the nicotine. And where do these fit into the regulatory process? And is any of this being lumped together? Yeah, I think what we've seen over time, you're exactly right, is a trend that the tobacco companies, they want to become what they call total tobacco companies. So they want you to have your e-cigarette for when you can't smoke, and then you can have your regular cigarettes. So I think that's where the kind of the harm issue or the, the overall harm of these products comes into play because if you're using multiple different tobacco products and you're never quitting smoking because you don't have to, um, that's where you can actually get increased harm. Uh, but that's kind of a tobacco company strategy is to create all these kind of new and novel products. Um, and um, we've tried to address those in 2010 at the legislature and we made a lot of progress. So youth can't buy those products, um, but they can still be sold. Uh, they're taxed. So there is a lot of regulation, uh, but I think there's room, especially with these two products, to do some more. Go ahead. I have a question. I'll comment after your question. Is <laughs> 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 um, the Smoking Drug Administration investigating e cigs cigars? And what's their position or status of where is that at? So, how it worked was in 2009, the FDA was given the authority by Congress um, to regulate tobacco products. And at that time, um, they were only regulating cigarettes. So in, in order to regulate anything else, they have to go through rulemaking, uh, which is an extremely long and tedious process. So um, I think a, probably a couple months ago, the FDA came out with what's called advanced notice of proposed rulemaking. And they said, these are the things we're thinking of doing. So they would regulate e-cigarettes, uh, cigars, all these things. Um, and uh, now it's open comment period. So there's an open comment period, then the FDA takes it back, they consider it. But so far the FDA has been sort of, um, I'd say only half successful. Everything they've tried to do, they've been sued by the tobacco industry and they've only won probably half the time. They were trying to do graphic warning labels, for example, on cigarettes. They were about to implement it and they were sued and um, they aren't allowed to implement that now. So um, it's sort of like waiting for the FDA is uh, a long process that, um, you know, probably better just to move ahead locally is what we feel, but thank you.